What's up guys, Chris Schwartz Edmondson here from Schwartz Edmondson Web Design. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at serving alternate logos over banner images uh, and how to compensate for different color styles with the transparent header setting selected. So it's gonna be a really good one. There's gonna be a lot of good learning today. Let's jump right in. Now when you first get into 7.1, it probably looks something like this. You have the header at the top and it just kind of scrolls up with the page. So let's go ahead and look at uh, the different header styles that we can add with 7.1. So right now um, it has a white minimal color theme if we jump into the colors panel. Uh, and we can change this to any number of different colors. Um, some are gonna look better than others. So right now we have a black logo because on all of our regular pages, like our shop, our blog, things like that, you know, we obviously want a dark logo on a white background since those regular pages have white backgrounds. So um, this is kind of like our default uh, color theme right here, this white minimal look. Um, and we can change it to any of these different themes. Obviously, uh, some of these, like Dark Minimal, doesn't look so good with a dark logo. Dark Bold doesn't look so good with a dark logo. Neither does Black Minimal, Black Bold, nope. Uh, Accent Dark looks good with a dark logo, but Accent Light doesn't look so good. So we have to be careful when we're choosing these color themes uh, for our header, like what's going to look good with our logo. So I'm going to stick with White Minimal for now. And let's go ahead and look at uh, some of the fixed header styles that we can do. So if we go back and then jump over to the style panel and toggle on fixed position, we can first look at the basic fixed header. So the basic fixed header setting is just your straightforward fixed header. As you scroll down the page, the header will be fixed to the top. Uh, so nice and handy, the navigation is always right there. So the other style that you can do for the site header, if you go to style and switch the basic to scroll back. Now I really like this header style, this is my favorite. I'm gonna click save. And as you scroll down the page, you'll see that the header jumps out of the way. But as you start scrolling back up, probably to get back to the navigation, the header kind of jumps back down into view. So this is a great user experience because it's not covering any content as the person is scrolling down the page. And then it's accessible as soon as they start scrolling up. So this is my favorite, um, but for the purposes of this tutorial, we're gonna go ahead and flip it back to a basic fixed header. Now the thing that I wanna look at today is uh, having a transparent header over banner images. So if we go back to the colors panel, you can see that there's a toggle for transparent and there's an important note here. It says the header will use the color theme of the first section on the page. Um, so this is important. Now, depending on the style that I have for the first section, the header will either look good or not look good as we scroll down the page. So for example, on this first section, if I click edit and I jump into the background color styles for this section. If I go to colors panel, you can see I'm using a black minimal color theme. So um, the color for the header on the black minimal theme that I have set up in the color styles is black as you scroll down. So obviously that doesn't look good on the page. Uh, look good for the logo. Now, uh, if I go to the contact page, we have this different color theme set up, and as, a, as I scroll down, like the logo looks fine over this color theme. Um, but when I was first flipping through the color styles for the header, you could see that like on about like four of the 10 different color styles, um, we had a dark logo as you scroll down, and we lost the header logo against the dark background because we're using a dark logo. So what I wanna look at today with you guys is we're going to go over how to make sure that a light logo is being used depending on the style of the first section on the page. So this is going to make your transparent header setting in Squarespace much more usable because obviously this is not usable. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and 
I'm going to right click on the header and we'll jump into the HTML of the website. So here we have this header announcement bar wrapper container. And as I hover over it, you'll see it's highlighted on the screen here. The blue is the element itself. The green is the padding on the top and the bottom. So you'll see for this black minimal color theme that I have added, it gets a class of black added. Uh, and if I flip over to that contact page where we have a different uh, first color theme, if I right click on the header again, you can see that this has a class of bright. So that tells us that depending on the color theme of the first section, the header gets a different class added to it. That kind of signifies what the first section's color theme is using. So we can use that and depending on uh, this class here, we can serve a different logo. So in this case, we'll be serving a white logo uh, on certain classes that are added to this container. So for example, like on the uh, black minimal color style where the header is black, we're gonna be serving a white logo. So I've gone ahead and created a really visually pleasing diagram for you guys that will kind of map out all the classes that are added to the header, the different classes that are added based on what the color section is for the first section. So I'll go ahead and pull up that diagram now. Now I know it's beautiful, but try not to get distracted because this is really important. So the white minimal color theme gets a class of white added. The white bold color theme gets white bold. And that uh, kind of just gets repeated. Light minimal, light, light bold, light bold, dark minimal, dark, etc., etc. The only one that kind of strays from that naming convention is the accent dark gets a bright class and accent light gets a bright inverse class. Otherwise, the naming convention is just like name and then name bold. So now that uh, we know kind of the structure of that the header is going to take on depending on the uh, or depending on the settings of the colors for the first section. I have gone ahead and taken the liberty in the custom CSS window to already write out all of the classes here. So uh, now we can just focus on adding our white header to the page and this will apply to all uh, every single different color style and then we'll just kind of whittle away the ones that we don't want it to apply to. So uh, the first thing that we're going to do is we need to upload the file for the white version of our logo that we want to upload. So go ahead and click on Manage Custom Files in the CSS window and just go ahead and add your images uh, or your image. So I've already added a logo white there. Okay, so what we're going to do, if I right click on the logo and click inspect, we're going to uh, basically add an image using the content property to the container that houses the logo image. So this one here. So pretty much the way we'll target it, it doesn't have a class that we can target, but we'll just target the A that's in the header title logo. So our, um, our targeting is going to be header announcement bar wrapper. And then within the header announcement bar wrapper container, we're going to target the header title logo, and then we're gonna target the A. Perfect, so now we're targeting that link container. And now we're going to add a content property and the content that we're adding is a URL. And so we'll close that off with a semicolon and now we can add our image URL within these uh, quotation marks here. So I'm gonna click on Manage Custom Files and I'll click on my logo and it'll insert that URL there. Perfect. Okay, so I have my image added. Um, so one thing, one edit that I need to make because it's not working right now, it's not applying. Um, so all of these classes that get added, get added on this element. So because I have this element right now inside of this curly bracket, um, it's looking for a header announcement bar wrapper within a container that has this class, but 
they're actually on the same level. Um, the class, like these two, this header announcement bar wrapper is not within a container that has a class of black. They're the same container. So all we have to do is add an ampersand uh, before this period. Uh, and then our new logo is now being served. Uh, so the ampersand is this shortcut. Squarespace uses a less preprocessor uh, and allows you to do some cool things like nesting uh, and this ampersand shortcut. So basically this ampersand says, uh, basically take everything that's here and then apply it right here. So this way we can just write one long list of all the different variations um, and then just use an ampersand to add that targeting to our header announcement bar wrapper. So if you didn't follow that, that that's okay. I just, I promise you this is the best way to write this CSS. Okay, so now we have our white uh, header applying to every single different kind of uh, header page section layout. So we don't necessarily want that. We only want it on the uh, color variations that don't look good. And if I remember correctly, if I go back to my diagram, so it looks good on all of, like the black version of the logo looks good on all of the light um, variations. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll delete white and white bold and light and light bold. But we definitely wanna keep it on dark and dark bold, black and black bold. Um, and we don't need it on bright. So this is the bright setting, but we do want it on bright inverse. Cool. So now on this bright um, page, we just get the normal setting here. But if I go back to the home page, we now get this white version of the uh, logo being loaded when the header is black. So this is super awesome. This is a great way um, just to make sure that your logo is always visible no matter what the first page section style is on your website. All right, that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to the channel and also leave a like on this video that helps other people find my content and also gives me a little motivation to keep creating Squarespace content for you guys. The link to this code is in the description below, so it's just a quick copy and paste onto your own website from the blog post that I have linked. All right, that's it for today. I will see you in the next one.